Now, the Galaxy S23 Plus is a phone that's very good, yet overrated. And let me tell you why. Now the reason that I say that the Galaxy S23 Plus is good yet overrated is because it's one of the many phones that is very good at what it does, but doesn't really live up to its price. Currently, the S23 Plus is at a starting price of $1,000, which really puts it in a tough spot because most people spending over a thousand bucks will really want to go with the S23 Ultra, which is a better phone all around. And if they want to get a quality Galaxy device for cheaper, they can get the regular Galaxy S23 since it's basically the same phone that's a little smaller. But besides the situation that the Galaxy S23 Plus is dealing with, it's still a really good phone that has given me a very premium experience. And in this video, I'll be giving you guys my honest thoughts to help you decide whether or not it's actually worth buying. Now looking at the S23 Plus's display, it has a 6.6 inch dynamic AMOLED display that on paper might not get a lot of people hyped, but really does exceed expectations when used in real life. I love that Samsung matches the brightness of the S23 Ultra with the S23 Plus, both are at 1750 nits peak, and I had no problem seeing anything outside no matter how much the sun came out. Something else that I noticed was that the auto brightness worked very well. I usually adjust my brightness manually, but with the S23 Plus, I really didn't have to since it gave me amazing accuracy throughout the day. Now in terms of resolution and viewing experience, the S23 Plus really held up. The screen was very punchy with a tone of realism. Gaming really brought out the colors, especially when I was playing something like Subway Surfer or Smashy Road. Watching content and movies on it was great as well. Dolby Atmos enhanced my experience since the speakers were top tier, but I really do wish that the S23 Plus had better resolution. It only had a 1080p display, which is pretty underwhelming since this phone is well over a thousand bucks. The 120Hz refresh rate was good. I feel like it felt even smoother since it was well integrated with One UI 5.1, making it flow very nice with the smooth and sharp animations that Samsung Samsung are generally known for. The S23 Plus has a bunch of screen real estate as well due to the hole punch camera being so small. I felt every bit of its 6.6 inch display since the bezels are basically non-existent. The display was flat so there was even more screen and I use swipe gestures which creates even more space. Something else that's unfortunate about the S23 Plus's display is that it's not LTPO like the S23 Ultra so it can only drop down to 48 hertz. This comes with less power efficiency and can also deteriorate faster over time. And finally, the fingerprint sensor and facial recognition for the S23 Plus worked very very well. I mostly used my fingerprint scanner since it was lightning fast and I didn't really have to pick up my phone to unlock it. But if you are someone who likes to use facial recognition, it also works very well and is very comparable to iPhone's Face ID in terms of sharpness and accuracy. Now in terms of design, there really isn't much that changed since last year's S22 Plus, but one thing that you will notice is that the back camera is more reminiscent of the S23 Ultra since Samsung has smoothed out the edges to give it an overall cleaner look. Besides that though, you have the same recycled aluminum size that create a glossy look, same hole punch camera in the front, same rounded frame that's easy to hold, and the same frosted back that gives the whole S23 lineup a very clean, simple signature look. Another notable improvement is that the back and front of the S23 Plus are Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which Samsung says can survive a few drops on concrete pavement. I personally wouldn't recommend testing that out. I think it'll be pretty good, but I still don't think it will survive more than five drops on concrete. Three months in, I still have yet to get any notable scratches on the front and back. There are times where I will rock my S23 Plus without no protection, but the majority of the time it's in a case, and I still think that that says a lot about its durability since Samsung is always known to have stronger materials. The S23 is also very comfortable to hold. It felt very comparable to the iPhone 14 Pro Max since they are indeed the exact same size with a rounded frame, which resulted in me not dropping it a lot since it had a very snug fit. Now the S23 Plus is very light in weight despite its size. It weighs 196 grams which is significantly lighter than the S23 Ultra and 14 Pro Max and I think that this really adds to its comfort. I usually always have my phone in my hands whenever I'm running, in a house, or at work so it really helps to have a phone that doesn't weigh me down. Down. Lastly, the colors on the S23 Plus this year were out of this world. I have the green one and I usually try my hardest not to rock it without a case since it does look really good. The rich green rails, camera, and back make it look even more beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. Now moving on to the most important piece of hardware that really controls the life of your phone, the Galaxy S23 Plus has a 4700 mAh battery that can last you all day depending on the type of user you are. Now, if you're the type of user that is on your phone all day, it takes a lot for you to get your eyes off your phone and you always get over seven hours of on-screen time. This phone will last you if you use power saving mode only. But if you are someone who is on your phone a majority of the day, you use your phone moderately for social media, make a couple of calls, watch some YouTube videos and get around five to six hours of screen time a day, this phone will certainly last you all day with no power saving mode. I usually get around five to six hours of screen time with mine, so I easily end my day with about 25% worth of battery, which is pretty great. I don't 
don't do too much and I just use my phone like the average person would. And also a quick disclaimer for anyone who has questions. Most of my days I have 5G on all the time. My always on display was always on. I use auto brightness. My phone is on light mode during the day and I never use power saving mode so you can get better results if you are a power saver. The S23 Plus supports 45 watt fast charging which I had no problems with. It charges from 0 to 100% in just over an hour and I got so comfortable with it to the point where I wouldn't even stress charging it at night. My charging patterns are pretty simple. Most of the time I do charge my phone overnight. There are also times where I will forget to charge it at night, wake up, charge my S23 Plus while I'm in the shower and it will always be on 100% by the time I got done. So if you are someone that wants a phone that can can last you all day, the Galaxy S23 is your go-to. Now just like the S23 Ultra and S23, the Galaxy S23 Plus comes with the latest and greatest Snapdragon Gen 8 2 chip that is not only more powerful than last year's Gen 1 chip, but it will also be much less power hungry and also built for better efficiency. And also speaking of efficiency, the Gen 2 chip for the Galaxy S23 Plus is custom made, meaning that Snapdragon was well aware of how the Galaxy S22 series and other Android phones suffer from overheating and based on my use over the past couple of months, the S23 Plus has yet to overheat. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm recording, playing games, scrolling through social media, and many other regular things on my phone, and no matter how long I've tested it, I didn't notice a single slowdown and was very impressed. Samsung also is using a new cooling system with vapor chamber cooling, and every single Galaxy S23 Plus in and outside of America will be getting a Snapdragon chip, so finally, this is the end for the Exynos chip. And now the Galaxy S23 Plus has a 50 megapixel main camera along with a 10 megapixel telephoto and 12 megapixel selfie with a 12 megapixel ultra wide. And based on my usage over the past couple of months, I would say that just like the S23 Ultra and S23, the pictures look really good. Now starting with zoom modes, the S23 has a couple of different zoom modes and of course the quality gets dumbed down a bit once you get closer, but I found the closer pictures to be really good and still look really sharp. The shutter speed has gotten better, but there's still room for improvement. I decided to test this out by shooting a moving car and as you can see right here, the camera was able to capture most cars beautifully but still really couldn't compare it to my iPhone and my Pixel. Next up I want to show you guys how the camera performed in different environments and the first environment that I will be starting with is daytime. Now looking at the outside photos the selfies were good but really couldn't capture my skin tone well. Compared to the Pixel and iPhone they are a little lackluster and make me look lighter than I actually am and also the sharpness on my face could be too much at times but there were a lot of photos that I did like and I also took some photos of random street objects, the sky, and different aspects of nature and I can honestly say that the Galaxy S23 Plus held up very very well in these environments and I was really impressed since the vibrancy was out of this world and I was able to get some really good photos. Now in a night setting I would pretty much say that everything looked good the camera will automatically switch into night mode and once I snapped a shot, everything was pretty much brightened up and I could see very clearly. And I was also very impressed how they added vibrancy to these photos because again, it's night mode shots. Now taking a look at inside photos, the S23 Plus was able to capture everything very nice. And whenever I got really good pictures, they will be very comparable to my outside daytime pictures. But whenever the lighting wasn't right, they were kind of mid. And whenever I took selfies at night, it didn't really look good because again, it made me look lighter than I actually am. And the brightness didn't correlate as well. You can for sure get some better pictures, but if you are a person of of color it will make you look lighter now when it comes to shooting video the S23 Plus is a really good phone that is able to capture quality shots. You have many different modes and frame rates to choose from. You have 8K, 4K, 720p, and 1080p. And also as far as frame rates, you have 24, 30, and 60. And honestly, I prefer to shoot my videos at 4K at 30 frames per second. And all of these videos that I'm showing you guys, this is 4K at 30. The video stabilization was really good. I shoot my videos with my phone, so whenever I'm shooting my subject, the movements were very smooth and sharp, which was very impressive. So all in all, I would definitely say that the Galaxy S23 Plus has a good video camera that will give you some consistently good shots so if you're someone who wants to shoot content or you just want a solid camera it's definitely got you covered and also here's some extra videos that i was able to get And aren't you guys? That's my review on the Galaxy S23 Plus after three months of use. It's a really amazing phone that has a bad price. Simple as that. For the spec sheet alone and the competition, the price should definitely go down, especially when you have phones like the iPhone 14 Pro and Pixel 7 Pro that are damn near the same price and competing with it at every level. But besides that, the S23 Plus is superb. It has a good but not great display. It has a good battery life, amazing software, and it's just an overall really good phone that I think many of you guys will like. And let me know down in the comments. What do you think Samsung should have made the s23 plus this price and again i want to thank you guys for watching today's video and i'm gonna see you guys on the next one peace